Hi students, the engineering admission season has very truly kicked off. The JE application form is already live. You, as you know, about 15 lakh students would compete for about 17 and a half thousand students within IITs, about 24,000 seats in NITs and about 8,000 plus seats in triple ITs. All put together, you have 50,000. But you should know one thing. If you stand to get anything less than 98 percentile marks, the chance of getting into any of these hallowed institutions is very, very low. And if you don't get 99 percentile marks, then the chance of getting into a branch of your choice in a college of your choice is almost negligible. With that being the case, I have known as a counselor that a lot of students, they prefer to only work for so much for JE that they start ignoring the other examinations, which might also give them a very, very good option. A lot of coaching institutions also indulge in mis-selling because they keep promising the style that whatever the scores that you get in the mocks, they promise you that you'll still have a chance to get into IIT and IIT, which is right. You must always live on hope, but you must not always ignore the other option that you must have or at least have a plan B. You have a plan A. I would want you to get into IITs or NITs or triple ITs, but if you don't get there, what are the other options that you must keep them at, at the back of your choice? Because at this point in time, if you don't get 99% and above, you don't get a preferred branch in a preferred college in the country. And if you get anything less than 98 percentile, you don't stand a chance of getting into any of these institutions. From that perspective, what have we've done is we've identified about five examinations that you must keep your eye on. And these five examinations are Bitsat, Witty, SRMJE, Manipal, and Amrita Engineering Entrance Examination, AEEE. Why do we recommend that? I'll tell you as we move along in the following video. One such examination is Witty. Vitti is for VIT University, which is in Vellore, which is in Tamil Nadu. But it's been there for a long, long time. Now, VIT University, they have in all how many campuses? You have one campus in Vellore, then Chennai, Andhra Pradesh, Bhopal, Bangalore, and Mauritius. What you must remember is the universities off campus is only Chennai, which means that VIT University has Vellore and Chennai campuses. AP is a separate state private university. Bhopal is a state private university, Bangalore is again another campus and Mauritius is another campus that they started and is just about to start. But you have four campuses for which there is one examination which is called VITTI. Bellur and Chennai being VIT university, uh, deemed university, AP and Bhopal being state private universities. Why do we recommend VITTI? VIT university has been in existence for a long, long time, right? It's 11th best in NRF ranking. NRF ranking is one of the most credible rankings that India has because it is done by the government of India. In NRF rankings, it is ranked 11th in engineering domain. It's 19th in the best overall university category, 10th in the university category again, 13th in research, and falls in uh, in 11th to 15th in innovation. So at every single level, you're seeing them in the top 15, top 20 kind of a thing, and it's 11th best in engineering domain. So if you're looking at BTEC, it is right up there in terms of engineering. And in QS World University rankings, it ranks between 791 and 800 world over. It offers B, BTEC, BBA, BCom, BDES, LLM and so on and so forth. And its highest payment has been 88 lakh rupees last year. So you essentially are dealing with a university which has been able to get very, very good offers for its students also. By the way, our own ranking, Career 360, ranks it as the best private in, in the sense because it's got a 5A, which is the best score that we can ever think of. And in, even in NAC rating, it's got A double plus, which is one of the best ratings that you, anyone can get. Right, And it's also accredited by multiple agencies including ACCA, ACBSB and ABET. Now, VIT as a university was established in 2001. So, it's got a legacy of about 23 years. It's a deemed private university. Because of AWS, it can have multiple campuses. As of now, it has one more campus in Chennai, which is a big enough campus. This campus is spread over 372 acres. The total student strength based on NRF data is 35,377. By the way, the NRF data is slightly dated because now it would be more because this NRF data is for the previous to previous year and it keeps increasing. So you must keep that at the back of your mind. This time, in my opinion, there'll be about 50,000 students on the campus. The total male versus female is about 79% to 21%. And you also have fantastic geographical diversity because of the 35,000, 26,000 students come from outside the state, which essentially means about 75 to 80% students are from outside of Tamil Nadu, which means it's not a local university, it's now a genuine national university and outside the state. By the way, they also have students coming from outside the country. A lot of NRS come in, a lot of foreigners come in. About 1,400 students are from outside the country, which is a very, very good number for a private university. As I said, they also have other campuses. One is VIT Chennai, which is established in 2010. 
and the campus size is about 192 acres. They have about 9,200 students at that point in time. Then you have VIT Amravati, which by the way is a state private university under the Andhra Government Act. Fantastic campus spread over 200 acres. And at this point in time, what I understand is their intake is about 4,000 students a year. Then you also have VIT Bhopal, which is under the Madhya Pradesh government. Uh, it's a state private university. This was established in 2017, seven years old. Campus size is about 300 acres. Then VIT Bangalore is just established, recent, very, very recent. They've not even started. I think this year they're going to start admissions and everything. And they also have VIT Mauritius, right? So why do we talk of VITI as an examination? Is essentially this, because they have about six campuses. The intake is about 15,000, give or take a thousand seats here or there. So you have a better chance of getting into a university with one single examination. This university also has been working very, very well and delivering to the students in terms of placement outcomes, which is what many students want. Now you look at what essentially it means, the kind of faculty it has, based on 22 23 data, they have about 3068 as a total faculty, of which about 72% is PhD faculty, and about 76% is regular full time faculty that they have. The way placement, I talked of placement earlier. Remember, when we talk of placement, this 22 23 data means that the students would have joined in 2018 19, four years back, and they passed out in 22 23. There are 7404 of them. Of which 7,053 graduated. Some take a drop year, all those things also happen. And some people also step back, right? Of which 4,923 got placed and 1,051 preferred higher education, which means they moved out of the college to pursue their post-graduation programs. The placement percentage is 82%. At that scale, 82% is a very, very good placement number. And the average salary was 9 lakh rupees. In fact, I know that the top 1000 students, if you look at VIT uh, University, they get a placement of over 20 lakh plus, right? It is just as you keep coming, coming down, then it gets into a problem. But otherwise, a placement of 9 lakh average at this scale of about 5000 students getting placed is a very, very good number. Now, how do we, as I said, you know, I just want to tell you how we've taken this data. This is accurate, accurate data from the government of India sources. If you look at this, these numbers here, these are 20 to 23. The total number of students graduating in minimums is 7,153, of which the students got who got places 4,923 and at 9 lakh rupees. And the students who got into higher education is 1,051, which is what we talk about. So every data that we're talking about is from a government source. And that is very important for me to explain to you of why we're recommending because at that placement number and those kind of numbers and all, it's extremely, extremely good. Now, one of the things that you must remember is how competitive is it? I told you about 15,000 seats all put together, 15,000 plus or minus because these seats keep changing at, at each campus, at each university. So I cannot fix a number for you people. But in all, about, in my opinion, about 15 to 16,000 seats is what they would have this year. But for those 15, 16,000 seats, you actually have a total number of applicants to be 2,21,000 last year, right? That's based on 20 to 23 data. Now, this information, again, we take from a uh, uh, filing by the university called AQAR, which is filed with the government of India, with Ministry of Education. How this data comes up, you look at this data here. Now, this is a filing by VAT University to the uh, regulatory agencies. And these are the number of seats that they have. If you see per branch, you actually have a seat of MTech, MTech integrated, BTEC computer science, BTEC computer science, bioinformatics and all. These are the number of seats that they have per branch. In fact, they have quite a few branches. Just in Vellur alone, they have 13,651 seats. Of, and the total applications for this is 2,21,000 for all the seats that you're dealing with. So now you work backwards, you actually possibly have a 1 is to 14, 1 is to 15 kind of a rejection ratio. So every 15 applicants, possibly one would get in. But it is good enough for you because you're now taking the IIT students being out about 45, 50,000 and then you come here. Of course, a lot of those students also will join this place because of, if you want to get a branch of mechanical in an IIT or NIT and a computer science here, there's a possibility that a lot of students will prefer this one because they, they go for the branch of their choice. And in that process, they, they come in here also. And it's one of the, the best possibly private university along with Bits Pilani and a couple of others, which I'm going to recommend as I move along. Right, but the total applicants that you have is 2.21 lakh. So you actually have 2,21,000 seats and 13,651 total seats intake last year. And this is very crucial for you because of which again, BTEC is only 7.60, but these are integrated programs and all. So you must remember how it all pans out, right? But in all, when you deal with this whole thing, you actually will have about 13, 14, 15,000 st students taking the BTEC. Within Bellur, you actually have 13,651 intake. 
Or if 7560 is just BTEC and then you have BTEC integrated, MTEC integrated and those kind of things that will keep adding. And then obviously the other difference between these two is the BBA, law and all those other programs that they have. But a decent number, 7560, just BE, BTEC, then you, uh, MA, MTEC, M MTEC also is an integrated program. And other campuses that you have, which is Amravati, Bhopal, Bangalore, Chennai, all those campuses put together, you will add to about 14, 15,000 seats is what I get. Now, what is the next data point that we have? You know, I talked of the seats that you have and everything. What is the fee structure? The fee structure at VIT is very unique. If you are very, very meritorious in the VT examination, you get a lower fees and then it keeps grading itself up as you move up. And they also divided this entire programs into group A and group B programs. I'll stick with group B at this point in time, which has all your computer sciences and the core BTEC programs that you have are all here. At 40, 50,000 rank also, possibly you'll get into one of the programs, at four, but you will be paying higher fee, which is 4.9 lakh rupees. The base fee is 1.95 lakh, based on your merit and they decide each year at what rank they'll charge you 1.95 lakh at what cutoff rank you will get 3 lakh 4000 4 lakh 2000 445 and 490 right but you have a decent chance of getting in it is just that for some of if your rank is not too good you will be actually paying a higher fee as compared to someone else so vit follows a policy of charging lesser based on your merit or charging more based on based on your merit the way you look at it Right, but you have a decent chance of getting in. For BT examination, obviously all of you would say, oh, do I need to prepare for the examination all over again? Is it very difficult as an examination at all? Not so difficult. Let me tell you how it all works out. Most of these examinations are based on your class 11th and 12th syllabus or the JE syllabus. They don't make you study all over again everything, right? If you just look at the BT examination and compare it JE main, both are online examinations. Now, BT is two and a half hours, JE is three hours. The sections are mathematics, physics, chemistry, aptitude and English. So basically aptitude and English are added here, whereas here it's just, just math, physics and chemistry. The total questions is 125, right? Everything is MCQs. Marking scheme is for each correct answer, one mark will be awarded and no provision for negative marking. So you actually get 125 marks in, in all and you get the score out of 125 and whatever is the best score will convert that itself into a rank and that rank will dis determine what course you get, what branch you get and what fee you have to pay based on the score that you have. And again, I'm saying, why do I, we recommend Vitti? Because the scale at which they're operating, you have a decent chance of getting into the college, a university which works really hard on its placements. And it is one of the best universities, private engineering universities at this point in time in the country. Because And this is said not just by us, but by every single ranking that you have, NIRF ranking, QS ranking, Career 360 ranking, or the accreditation that you have, NAC accreditation, at every single place, BAT seems to be coming up as one of the best private universities. And that's why we're recommending. So this is one of the exams that we're recommending. We're going to be recommending four more. So please keep looking out for the videos of the other four examinations that we recommend. Please look at why we're recommending the other four also, and it might really help you. My recommendation for you is, at any point in time, if you're likely to get anything less than 95 percentile at this point in time based on your mock scores. It is time for you to, you know, wear a safety belt and a cushion and ensure that you start applying for a few other examinations also so that you have very, very decent options while you're working for your primary goal of getting into one of the IITs and one of the NITs. Now, all of you would be worried about how we should take this examination, whether we should prepare for it, where do you get material and all. Go through career360.com, you will have every single material that would help you prepare for this examination. You will also understand the pattern of the examination, the, the syllabus for the examination and how to go about cracking it. We also have where possible the past few years question papers. We also have mock material. You can take a mock test on the platform. You can also actually download the complete study material for you to prepare for the examination. But remember, these examinations largely have your class 11th and 12th syllabus that you already studied along with possibly some, some of the JE examination syllabus. So if you're preparing for JE examination or if you're preparing for any of the state entrance examinations, much of the syllabus for these five examinations, if you still have a question, please write to us. I will personally ensure that you are responded to. The idea, the objective for all of us at Career360 is simple, that we want you to succeed in your career path. We want you to succeed in your life. And for that, we'll go that extra mile to ensure that we do everything so that you can succeed. Thank you so much. Namaskar.